Okay, good morning everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, we're here today to uh, the official launch of our new pilot program that we've partnered with the Alberta Motor Association on. And it's uh, just another uh, initiative to try and increase uh, traffic safety in general and tow truck driver sa or operator safety uh, specifically. Uh, this project's been in the work for several months now and finally we're ready to turn it loose. So. The uh, initiative uh, is hopefully to address motorists that ignore the safe passing laws that are in enforced in the Traffic Safety Act in Alberta. And uh, just generally make people aware that the laws exist and the ones that ignore it then will hopefully uh, be able to change their behavior on the roads. The, uh, the, the uh, project's sort of pointed at the higher speed roadways around the city of Edmonton or within the city of Edmonton. Whiteman Drive, Yellowhead Trail, uh, QE2, and the Anthony Henday. Those are the, uh, we felt for the uh, tow truck operators, the more dangerous due to the higher speeds that are driven on those roadways. Uh, the project uh, will operate over a six month uh, pilot period. Uh, during that period of time, AMA will have uh, contact for an on duty uh, traffic enforcement sergeant who they'll contact, give us a heads up. Where a, uh, a towing operation is going to be uh, be done or completed, and through that, and as available, uh, an enforcement unit or units will attend to that location as we can, and hopefully quite regularly, just to monitor those locations for uh, offenses related to the safe driving uh, laws, the safe lo driving or safe passing laws, I should say, f for emergency vehicles or that traffic are to slow to 60 kilometers an hour or 50 if it's a 50 kilometer zone when passing a tow truck that's working with its amber lights flashing. On a multi-lane higher speed roadway that would reduce your speed to 60 kilometers per hour at least in the lane adjacent to that vehicle or move over a full lane. If the vehicle happens to be straddling a lane they still need a complete lane to be away from that vehicle when they're passing but the drop in speed is relative to the lane adjacent to that uh, vehicle that's doing its work on the roadway, or along the roadway. Uh, so that's how the, op the uh, operation will work. And as, as I say, uh, there's a lot of toll calls out there. We're hopeful to get as, to as many as we can. Uh, increasing awareness is another and the education component of that uh, to motorists generally so that they wake up when they do see the lights, amber lights flashing. And this would pertain uh, safe safety to uh, uh, other construction vehicles just to make them aware the, that they should slow down or give workers room to do their job. Uh, tow truck operators don't have the luxury of an engineered work site like uh, lots of sta static uh, construction zones that have been engineered with barricades and all kinds of signage. They're just uh, kind of random. They go to a call and have to make it work as best they can. So we need to provide the safe distances and space for them to do that. Uh, again, this is a, a pilot that we're uh, very, very happy and grateful that AMA has partnered with us uh, to make this work and hopefully change some driver behavior and uh, save any uh, significant injury crashes. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, sums up the basics of the operation. Uh, I'd like to just introduce uh, Jeff Kasberg, Vice President for Advocacy and Operations with Alberta Motor Association. <laughs> it is. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so Jeff Kasbrick, J-E-F-F-K-A-S-B-R-I-C-K. -F -F -I I'm Vice President of Advocacy and Operations for the Alberta Motor Association. Inspector Johnson, Sergeant Bates, uh, and to all of our partners uh, at the Edmonton Police Service, we thank you very sincerely uh, for this campaign. We are both grateful and extremely excited to be partnering with you in this. I'd also be remiss if I didn't specifically thank Chief McPhee for his leadership as well. 
From the very beginning of AMA's advocacy on increasing awareness around roadside safety, Chief McPhee has been a stalwart supporter, um, always willing to do all that uh, can be done to support our essential roadside workers. Each year, AMA responds to more than 37,500 high-risk calls. That translates to a high-risk call one every 14 minutes. In 2021, that also translated to more than 4,000 of these high-risk calls being in the city of Edmonton alone. And the unfortunate reality is that serious incidents or close calls are still a far too common occurrence for our tow operators. A 2020 AMA survey found that 42% of motorists were either unaware of Alberta's slowdown move over legislation or didn't realize that it actually applied to tow trucks. And so we keep seeing the consequences of that unawareness. Since December 2019, there have been at least 36 near misses and 14 serious incidents involving on-duty tow trucks across this province. This, to us, is simply not okay. And we are determined, along with our partners at EPS, to actually do something about this. Slow for the tow is more than just a campaign, and it's far more than just a slogan. It's about encouraging the right behavior to keep our essential tow operators and the Albertans that they are responding to safe at the side of the road. Every tow operator is someone's loved one, someone's mum, uncle, brother, or spouse. And if it's not us stranded at the roadside today, it could be us or a family member tomorrow. But the re other reality of this situation is that each of us has the power of making a difference. Each of us can do the right thing. We can slow down, move over, and give our roadside workers the space they need and uh, the family that's broken down at the side of the road, the space that they need to be just a little bit less anxious. Yes, we all live hectic lives, but those few extra seconds could actually help save someone's life. We're making some progress on roadside safety, fortunately. Recent amendments to Alberta's safe passing legislation are important improvements, expanding to other roadside workers and applying this law to all lanes of travel in the same direction, as well as single undivided highways. But improved laws also bolstered by education uh, and need to be also supported by enforcement. And that's what today's partnership is all about. So we're truly grateful to Sergeant Bates, to the EPS for their continued partnership in traffic safety and for their leadership that they've played in today's announcement. And ultimately, we ask all Edmontonians to slow for the tow. Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, at AMA, um, we represent about 80% of all private passenger tows that occur uh, across the province. Uh, each year, we respond to about 37,500 high-risk calls, which translates to one of those calls every 14 minutes. In the city of Edmonton alone, uh, we last year responded to 4,023 high-risk calls. That's in an area where the speed limit is greater than 60 kilometers an hour. And uh, on both the Anthony Henday and White Mud alone, last year we responded to 2,630 uh, calls on those corridors alone. And so if you want to get a bit of an understanding around sort of the volume that we could be uh, talking about and the everyday occurrence it is that our roadside operators are responding to some of those significant roadways, uh, that gives some perspective. Can you speak to anything specific in terms of Unfortunately, I can. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, as I said, it's uh, it's a far too often occurrence where our roadside operators either have near misses uh, or a serious incident. We, uh, in December of uh, 2019, uh, had an operator that was struck, um, uh, actually on the white mud, um, responding to a telephone or pardon me, responding to a roadside call. And the unfortunate consequence of that is a man who has dedicated his entire lifetime to responding to our members and took great pride in the work that he was doing is no longer able uh, to be uh, working uh, at the side of the road. 
And, uh, and then when we talk about near miss incidents, just to give some perspective as to what it is that we mean, we don't mean uh, a vehicle swerving, we mean uh, uh, pylons being shattered. Um, at the side of the road and, and any scene or buffer zone that our roadside operators are trying to create uh, ultimately being breached. Um, that is the kind of reality of the circumstance that we're talking about. So just, I guess, to clarify the actual pilot program, it'll see, you know, AMA gets a call, somebody needs to see on the roadside, and then they'll contact PTF, and then they might come and, you know, enforce That's, yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, whenever we receive one of the high-risk calls, our dispatch will then contact a dedicated line with EPS to the traffic unit. And, uh, and then based upon resources being available, uh, my understanding is that uh, those resources would either be within the area or perhaps stationed either behind or in front of a roadside scene to provide that overall awareness and education and ultimately, if necessary, to also provide that enforcement. Uh, in relation to the, the passing law, traffic law, it's the same as a construction zone. So the speed fines will double. So for uh, example, a 15 kilometer over ticket would result in a $252 fine. Just to give you some idea of the seriousness, that's not that far over the limit. So, And a 10 over would be roughly in the $200 category as well and demerits as well. Um, I was can you just explain again the, the lanes? Because wasn't it on, is that just on the highway then that you have to use both lanes to slow down? If there's an, if that was for an emergency vehicle, yeah, right? I mean, the, on a single lane roadway, obviously it would just be to slow to 60 or 50 if it's a 50 kilometer per hour zone. If you're on, for example, the white minute at an 80 kilometer an hour zone, it's a multi-lane roadway. Presumably the towing, uh, the tow worker would be on the shoulder of the road, presumably. If they're not, you need to slow to 60 and or move over a lane. The slowing is, is the rule for the adjacent lane. Moving over the speed reduction isn't necessary, but you must give that full traffic lane between you and the tow truck on the side of the road or in whatever lane it's in. Are there any other questions that anyone has? I should mention too, and I missed it in my uh, first bit there about the social media campaign that uh, AMA and uh, EPS have engaged in as well. The slow for the tow will be the hashtag for it. And that'll be rolling out as time goes on from today. For more awareness for the uh, driving public. You bet, a lot of social media stuff, yeah.